Welcome back to my beginning TDD series. I'll begin this video by implementing the functionality that one can exchange items in the list by using the index operator. I therefore write a test that has three parameters. The elements in the items array will be added to the list in the arrange phase. Afterwards, I use index to set the new item at the corresponding position in the act phase. And finally, I check if the set operation performed correctly by getting the item via the index operator in the assert phase. I immediately implement the correct implementation in the setter without running the tests first. But I notice my mistake and comment the code to see the test fail at least once. I said it before and I say it again. Please let your tests fail before you make them green to ensure that you do not have any erroneous code in your tests. The reason why you should do this is the following question. Why do you actually trust your test code? Well, the answer is, usually you can trust it because of two things. It is easy to read and you see the test fail at least once. So, why is your test code easy to read? Usually, you aim for a low number of statements in the test method body and a low cyclomatic complexity. For those who don't know, cyclomatic complexity describes the number of different paths through a method, which is usually influenced by flow control structures like if-else blocks or loops in most languages. If you have a look at the code we've written so far, you'll see that the maximum number of statements is 6 and the highest cyclomatic complexity is 3. In most cases we are even less than these numbers. This means that we can easily understand our code when we write or read it. Together with the fact that you let each test fail once to ensure you are actually writing the correct statements for your test context, you are able to trust your test code. This usually leads to several short methods that test a certain detail of the test target in a certain context. Thus you should go for a lot of small test methods with a low cyclomatic complexity, which should be ideally one, rather than a lower number of larger test methods. Please note that this is easier to achieve at the unit test level than at the integration test level or even end-to-end -end test level. But back again to writing more tests. After I committed my changes for this cycle, I start the next test that checks the edge case where items are set by the index operator at the end of the list. Here I introduce the builder pattern to my tests. I want to use it because in a lot of tests I use items that I pass in as a parameter to populate my list instance in the arrange phase. With the builder I can circumvent the necessary loop in my tests which lowers their cyclomatic complexity and also deals with some code duplication. A builder object has at least a build method on it that creates another object and all its necessary dependencies which the builder usually holds as fields. In our case the list is created and then the items are added to it. Finally the list is returned. The items can be given to the builder by calling the withItems method. The special thing about this function is that it returns a reference to the builder itself, which we can use to chain all method calls together. After moving the builder to a separate file, you can see the method chaining in action. The test target is created by instantiating the list builder, calling the withItems method right afterwards and because of this method returning a reference to the builder object, I can immediately call build. This method chaining technique is also called a fluent API and leads to very concise code in my opinion. I finish the test by setting the new item at the end of the list with the given index and afterwards writing the appropriate test data. In the act phase, I use the assert equal method for collections the first time. As my list implements i enumerable of t, I can use this assert method to validate that two collections actually contain equal items. I use link to add the new item to the items parameter and thus form a collection that holds the expected elements. 
Please note that I could have actually omitted the index parameter completely and instead I could have used list.count. This would have been more expressive, but somehow I didn't get it at the time when I wrote this code. Well, I guess I'm only human. The next test is about the fact that the index setter should throw an index out of range exception when an invalid index is specified. But I don't think that this test is really interesting to you because you should have acquired the knowledge in the past videos to easily write this code by yourself. But even in this code I write an error in the exception message. I use the zero in curly braces two times where I should have used one at the end of the string I want to format. My test didn't catch this error because I do not test exception messages. Well, maybe I should start doing this. But instead, let's jump to the next cycle. In this one, I do not write a new test, but instead I refactor existing ones. That is, I introduce the list builder to all appropriate tests. Because of this, I can get rid of the code duplication that's introduced by adding items to the test target in the arrange phase. And please note that I run the tests at the end to ensure that I did not introduce any errors with my refactoring. In this video you learned why you can trust your test code. The main point being short method bodies with a low cyclomatic complexity. This should lead you to writing many small focused tests. You also learned about the builder pattern which you can use to create the test target. A builder can be equipped with a fluent API so that you can chain method calls together to provide all necessary dependencies for your test target. I use these fluent APIs frequently in my own tests and I strongly recommend that you should do the same. And finally, you saw that I made two minor mistakes in my tests, although I consider myself to be a rather experienced programmer. And that's what will probably happen to you too. After programming for a while, you lose some focus and introduce these minor parts in your code that are not correct. This might be irrelevant issues like the tests that I could have expressed better or the wrong number in curly braces in a formatted string. But please be sure to test your production code thoroughly so that these minor mistakes do not result in a full-blown bug. Use other techniques like code reviews to minimize the amount of errors in your code even further. And that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you again in the next one. Bye!